I will show you how to get from this to this. Hello everyone, Roy Karkovs here. This here is the Japanese maple tree in the Portland Japanese garden. And I printed it on inkjet paper, coated it, and I'll show you how I do that. And then I painted in the leaves with opaque acrylics and colored the rest of the tree and some of the background with Marshall photo oils. So let's do this. I printed the photo I took of this tree with my Canon PIXMA 6820 on Breathing Colors Vibrance Luster Photo Paper. Next, I taped it at its corners to a piece of cardboard. This gives it some support. Then I spray it with golden gloss archival varnish and this is to prevent the inks from running and I'm going to coat it with acrylic medium in the next step. When the spray is dry I roll on golden gloss glazing liquid, the acrylic medium, with a paint roller with a nap size of 3 8 of an inch. I roll over a couple of times to get good coverage. After this dries we can start painting and coloring the image. So here is our tree, and as you can see, if you look up closely, there's a slight reddish tint to this, the like the narrow, wider images of the wider areas of the thin branches, and that's because I sprayed it only once. Uh, well, I went over two times, but without any time in between, letting it dry and then spray again. I did that only once, so I didn't spray it twice. It didn't quite fix the ink, so when I rolled on the coating, the ink ran a little bit. Now, it's not too bad, I can live with this, but it's just to show that you have to be careful with this in order to have the inks um, not running. Um, however, I, I can do this. We're going to add a lot of colors to this anyway. So, let's grab some cadmium yellow. So what I'd like to do is I'd like to put a variety of colors in here from yellow through orange reds, maybe some purples. So we'll grab some cadmium yellow here. And then take my liner brush, dipping in a little bit of water. Okay, so we can really start anywhere, but I kind of like to start on the left. So if I do go on it with my hand, I don't smudge it. So let's start like closer to the some of the bigger branches here. So these leaves are like, it's hard to prescribe, but they're like thin long leaves. And because this is really s relatively small photo, I don't, I'm not going to care too much about the actual shape of the leaves. I'm just going to 
can see I'm going around this big branch here. So first I'm going to put in the yellows everywhere where I want them. So I have some video, other videos where I coated inkjet paper and I color on those with Marshall photo oils, but when you have the nice acrylic coating with acrylic medium on it, you can obviously also color it and paint on it with these acrylics. But later I would like to use some Marshall photo oils for to, to color the image. Now we're painting on the leaves, but later I would like to add some colors, coloring it, like the, the greens down here, the other bushes which will not cover opaquely the photo. So this is covering it. So the funny thing is, so, so this tree is in, in Portland in the Japanese garden and obviously I was there in the winter, there's no leaves, but when I took this picture I had no idea that this is <laughs> like the famous Japanese maple tree that you see a lot of pictures of online, in, including like Peter Lick's uh, tree of life is, is this tree so didn't recognize it until I kind of wanted to get an idea how to color a Japanese maple tree for this video googled it and then I recognized the shape of the of the branches So this tree has been photographed a lot, especially in, in the fall. So I could perhaps use a, a like bigger brush as I said, I'm not worried too much about the details of the actual leaves. But this will work just fine. Actually, now we get some, some brush strokes that kind of have the shapes of the leaves. Paint is a little bit transparent because of the water I added to it, which is fine. Let's see, some of these we can, some of the bigger branches we can just go over. Let's see. I 
maybe here. These big branches here, I really would like to show. Kind of going around those. Maybe in the back here. You know what, I'm going over this branch here because it's a little bit out of focus, it's really close to me. And we can just make it disappear. Making sure we keep these bigger branches in sight. Carefully going in between. So obviously you can do this with any tree. Take a picture in the winter and add your own leaves to them. I have another video that I did of a tree like near Mammoth Lakes, near or Bishop, between Bishop and Mammoth in California. But that one already had the leaves on it, and I uh, colored it with pastels in fall colors, whereas the actual tree was all yellow. I gave it some different colors. But that was with pastels, and it was coloring, so not painting on the leaves. So don't be scared to like go over certain areas. I mean, this is all far in the background, so this is all covered by the leaves of this tree.
Also, I'm going carefully around this, this little old branch here. here creating my own fall Japanese maple tree. Again, we'd like to show that branch. And then of course you kind of have to see where the bigger branches are and then go off of those. Where the smaller branches could, could be and then also the leaves. And also, since I mentioned I'm going to use Marshall Photo Oils later to color the image, it's a good thing, even though it's more of the background, to start with the acrylics, because you don't really want to go with acrylics over oils. Also, I would have to wait several days in order to do that in the first place, but oil over acrylic which works much better. So this dries fast, and when it's dry, it can put your oils on and if I then go accidentally here and there over the acrylics it's not out of a big deal. And even here in the sky we can just go over that. And then just imagining some of these bigger branches are covered by foliage, foliage that's more on the front. Almost done with the yellow. Okay, so now let's grab some orange. Cadmium orange. Same brush. And now let's start adding some orange. This is just pure orange straight out of the tube.
maybe add some of the opposite color to it to like slightly desaturate it and get a slight variety of of the same color in here. So this is, like I said, this is a pretty small photo, 8 by 12 inches. It, it's, it would be a little easier to work with a bigger one, so 12 by 18 or even larger than that. Would work a little easier. Okay, let's take some alizarin crimson. So we're kind of getting a like a color gradient from the bigger branches starting there and then outward going through yellow, orange and red. And maybe some random spots here, some of that alizarin crimson within the orange. Oh, that was a little too much. It's a little dark, so I'm going to add some white. titanium white there we go I'm grabbing some cadmium red now. Okay, let's grab a tad of black. Throw that back into my yellow here. Actually, it's not really necessary. I thought I would add some darker variations in here, but because it's half, not half transparent, but it's slightly transparent, you can still see some of the background, background coming through.
Maybe we should do the opposite. So let's grab some of that white. Mix that with my yellow. And add some highlights. Yeah, I like that. I still think that Orange maybe even is a little too dark. But alizarin crimson is also a little bit too dark. Let's mix a lighter a lizard and crimson ball. It's maybe too light. How about this?
All right, so now let this dry. It shouldn't take too long. And I'll come back and we'll add some colors with Marshall photo, oil, uh, Marshall photo oils, including on the branches. All right, and we're back. So this only took like maybe five minutes to dry. Um, <clears throat> but now I have my Marshall photo oils out. This is oxide green and cadmium yellow. And what we're going to do is we're going to color the rest that's left with these oils. So we'll grab a little bit of oxide green, a little bit of yellow. And I'm very used to adding Marshall photo oils either with cotton rounds or Q-tips. So I'm doing that here too. You probably could also use a brush here, but it's just the way I like to do it. There's a lot of moss in this in this photo, so I'm, even on the tree. So I'm going to add some of that moss color. So add a little bit of green and yellow to get a nice bright green. And I'm just gonna I'll start with a tree. It's a little too much, but since we have the applied the acrylic to the inkjet paper, <coughs> the acrylic medium, we can actually remove that. So let's put the clean side, see how we can remove it. Make it a little more subtle. Don't want to add too much. Also, would like to add a little bit of burnt sienna on the tree. Maybe a little bit here. And then in the foreground here, we'll use a cotton round for the bigger surfaces. And it goes pretty fast. And then maybe a little bit of yellow in some spots. Change it up a little. Just like that. Let's grab some burnt sienna. Clean new Q-tip. And we'll add that to the tree.
So you know that slight discoloration we had <coughs> of the ink running is of, uh, because of the ink running because we sprayed it only once. It's almost not noticeable anymore now. And here it's blending a little bit too much <coughs> with the background, so I'd like to replace that with the burnt sienna here. All right, and then the water here. Let's add some sky blue to that. It's a little dark gray, so you might not see too much of that blue. As the, the grays underneath desaturate your colors. But still, I still like this look, so. Even though it's like a desaturated, subtle blue. Still makes a difference. And there we go. I waited a couple of days for the oils to dry and then varnished it with Winsor & Newton Artist's Gloss Varnish, brushing it on with a flat 2 inch brush. That took about 10 hours to dry. I mean, I checked after 10 hours, but it may have been dry before that. So then I used acid-free artist tape to attach it to a piece of foam core. that I grabbed an 8 by 12 inch barnwood frame and stapled the art to it. adding a sawtooth hanger to the back, the piece is ready to put on a wall. Hope you 
you liked the video, please hit that like button, subscribe to my channel, and I will see you next time. Thank you.